Maybe you are a new player looking for something to give you a helping hand into getting into War Thunder, its basic mechanics and its gameplay. Or perhaps you are a veteran player looking for something just to club low tier with and have some fun. In both cases, the newly added beginner's pack is possibly just the thing you are looking for. For the price of €4.99, you will get yourself two vehicles, both of which are American Tier 1s. Firstly, the M3A1 USMC, a United States Marine Corps variant of the well-known Stuart tank. Now, this features a very good balance of mobility, firepower and armor, something we are going to look into in a short while. You will also receive the Rasmussen's P-36A. This is a variant of the well-known Hawk line of American fighters. This does feature two centrally mounted guns, one being a 50 cal and one being a 30 cal. Certainly a fairly average lineup of weapons for a low tier aircraft. The aircraft does present very nice speed and maneuverability, although does commonly face biplanes. So turn fighting is not always the best course of action. Now the PC version of this pack also gives you the United States Marine Corps decal, 123 silver lines and seven days of premium account. It is worth noting that on other platforms the contents of the pack may vary. For example on console you also get 500 golden eagles, although in all forms the two vehicles remain the same. So to start we're going to go take a look at the M3A1 USMC in ground RB battles and take a look at how to best use this vehicle. The first thing I want to focus on is the gun. This is a 37mm M6 cannon with the availability to use either AP or APC BC rounds of ammunition. Both of these rounds have the exact same best flat penetration of 78mm, although the APC BC has superior angled penetration at most ranges, which does of course mean that would be the best round to go with, as not only are you superior in the flat pen, but you also have far better angled pen than the AP round. Now the gun's reload is 3.77 seconds, but you can reduce that all the way down to 2.9 seconds if you upgrade your crew and eventually expert and ace them. This of course will then mean that you can effectively ambush and kill multiple enemies at one time without having to specifically focus on one enemy. The fast reload effectively means you can take out the gunner of one enemy, quickly knock out the gunner of another one before going back and finishing the other one off. This does of course mean multitasking can be a good thing to do, and for new players especially that will really Really help develop the skills of engaging multiple enemies at once. Now another thing, this being a premium vehicle, this will give you an increased RP and Silver Lion gain, especially if you're a new player again, very useful, you're going to be making a bit more coin, a bit more research points which will help you get better tanks and better just general vehicles down the line after playing a few games. Now the armor itself is fairly weak, it is a light tank, it is designed to be more of a scout vehicle being faster with a gun rather than being something that can effectively fend off enemy fire. The vehicle though does have quite good survivability, you have a four man crew and you can operate successfully with only two crew members. So two of your crew members can be killed and you can still be operational, you can take a full hit to the turret and still be able to operate the vehicle. You do also have a crew replenishment mechanic, which does mean that you can return back to a friendly capture point and effectively replace a crew member, giving you a bit more survivability once you have done that. Generally, it's a good vehicle. You have good mobility, which is certainly very useful. You're also fairly small, which means you can generally hide in quite nice little spots and even near cap points. The method I use personally with this vehicle is I generally take a cap point go away, hide near the cap point and wait for the enemy to attempt to take it. If it's a group of a few enemies, I can ambush them before they realize, knock out the gunners of them and then just finish them off one by one. Generally, that's a tactic that tends to work. So with that said and some gameplay shown in the background, hopefully you now sort of have an idea of how to use this vehicle. Use the APC BC, be sneaky, be fast and try and take out the enemy as quickly and effectively as possible. And if you're a new player, just remember, always take out the turret and the gun of the enemy tank first. So now we're going to move on to Rasmussen's P-36A Hawk. Majority of this gameplay will be in ground RB battles as while well, you're buying the aircraft alongside a tank, so it would seem logical that you would have them in a lineup together in ground RB, although later on I will be showing some air footage for those people who wish to fly it against other aircraft. Firstly, the guns. 
150 cal and 130 cal, both of which are mounted inside the engine cowling. Being centrally mounted does of course mean that firing at longer ranges will be far more accurate, and also the gun convergence setting is not such a big issue, which will be useful for newer players as they won't have to be fiddling around with various settings. If used alongside the M3A1, you will of course be using it in ground battles, and you won't be able to do a huge amount against most tanks, although with lighter tanks your 50 cal will occasionally get a nice shot. SPAAs and open top vehicles on the other hand will be fodder for your guns, most of the time with majority of their crew on the outside, allowing you to effectively pick them off and most of the time kill them. You also want to be looking out of course for any enemy aircraft so you can try and kill them and give your team on the ground some more cover from being bombed or shot at. Now using the aeroplane in Air RB, of course you are at 1.3 BR so you are sort of at the point where you are facing reserve aircraft which most of the time you are faster than although they will outmaneuver you so if you are facing biplanes or other lower BR vehicles such as the P26 you want to be attempting to boom and zoom them, go in, fast runs, shoot them and run away. If you're facing slightly higher vehicles such as early versions of the BF-109 or the Heinkel 100 which can be especially annoying, you want to make sure that you are trying to turn fight them as they're faster than you but not quite as maneuverable, although of course if you're in a good position, boom and zooming is certainly not out of the question. Of course, if you do end up in a dogfight situation, making effective use of your flaps is a very useful thing to do. Not only will the combat flap setting be useful at somewhat higher speeds in turn fighting, but if you get especially slow, make sure to have a button binded to the landing flap setting, so at lower speeds you can just get that extra bit of maneuverability out of the aircraft. Another thing for Air RB is to be careful with your engine. This aircraft does have a war emergency power setting for the engine and if left on for too long can lead to the engine overheating and being damaged. So that's one other thing to be careful of. So there you go, a somewhat brief overview of the vehicles of the beginner's pack for War Thunder. The P-36 is certainly a fairly decent fighter that will help introduce new players to various tactics and playstyles, as well as also being fairly decent at close air support, despite having no secondary ordnance. The M3A1 on the other hand is an absolutely brilliant tank for ground RB especially, being small, fast and having a very good gun with a brilliant reload. So is this pack worth the cost of €4.99 in the Gaijin store? Personally I would say yes. Even if it had no additional things like premium accounts or the silver lines included, just these two vehicles and the amount of fun that they can give you, especially in ground RB battles, is certainly worth the cost in my books. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. If you found it useful, please feel free to like the video. If you have any additional questions about these vehicles, do feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to answer your question. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.